Namaste and welcome to Indian Diplomacy, the show about India's foreign relations, uh, India's engagement with uh, key partners around the world, how India and uh, its friends are remaking the world order in a positive way. Uh, viewers, uh, we take up uh, important countries and their bilateral relationships with India in this show. And uh, this episode, we are looking at a country that's very, very critical for India's Act East and Indo-Pacific policy. This is Vietnam. Vietnam, words do not suffice to explain its importance, really, because Vietnam is a critical uh, building block of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, of Southeast Asia, important uh, maritime power, uh, dynamic economy, a country that uh, has a disproportionate impact on world history. Um, not just in the 20th century, but even before that, uh, known for its uh, fierce uh, sense of independence and autonomy, and uh, of course, a very important and constructive player in managing the balance of power in Asia. And uh, to take us through this uh, journey about India and Vietnam, uh, I'm really privileged to introduce you to Ambassador Preeti Saran. Namaskar. Ambassador Preeti Saran was India's ambassador to Vietnam and also Secretary East in the Ministry of External Affairs, handling the entire Indian foreign policy towards uh, Southeast Asia and beyond. So this region uh, has been shaped by her thinking and her uh, implementation of policies. So really honored to have you, Ambassador. Thank you. Ambassador, when we talk of Vietnam, I mean, um, superlatives, I mean, people often say, you know, they defeated three superpowers uh, in their history, recent history alone. Uh, first, the colonial rule of France, then the United States and then China. I mean, uh, uh, there's something special about Vietnam and it stands out. And uh, of course, uh, economically very vibrant now and um, uh, rising up the ladder in terms of income levels and uh, very pros relatively prosperous society now. You have served as ambassador to Vietnam. Yes. Your thoughts, opening thoughts on, you know, what makes it such a great country? Uh, you know, everything that you've said about Vietnam is just so true. And if you were to ask me my personal thoughts, I would say that yes, uh, you mentioned uh, my, the you know the superpowers that it defeated. You know, it was really a, a war-torn region, and it has risen literally phoenix, phoenix-like mm. from the ashes to have emerged. You know, such a dynamic economy. Uh, I think what singles out Vietnam in terms of its achievements, uh, one of course in recent years, uh, last over the last four decades, uh, a very sagacious uh, policies followed by the government mm. uh, of economic liberalization, uh, and the political will to do better, but all of that would not have been possible, I think without uh, the Vietnamese people. And if you ask me my thoughts about Vietnam and the Vietnamese people, I think it is their indomitable will, mm. their courage, uh, their uh, you know their determination uh, to do well, and their very hardworking people, uh, which has resulted in the success of that country and brought them where they are today. And when you talk about the Vietnamese people, I would like to specially mention the women in mm. Vietnam, you mm -hmm. know, they came into the forefront during the war years as well because they take on that additional responsibility. And thereafter, I think they've managed as a traditional society, the women have continued to play the traditional roles of being homemakers, but they've also come out uh, in the workspace. Uh, you know, they have taken on com commercial activities. They're there everywhere. If you were to visit any city in Mm, any place in Vietnam, you would find the presence, the dynamic presence of women, particularly in the marketplaces and everywhere. Uh, yeah, just major everywhere. contributors to the GDP. You know, participation yes. in the workforce is very high. Yes, yes. extraordinary. And even those uh, tunnels, the the ones outside Ho Chi Minh City, yes. I've had the privilege of visiting them. Kuchi tunnels. You see, the guerrilla warfare. Women yes. actually played a very big role very in the anti-imperial struggles yeah. of Vietnam. Yeah. So the other remarkable thing about the people of Vietnam, both men and women, is their uh, patriotism. You know, mm. that is something that has, uh, of course, got them the victories in warfare, as you mentioned. Uh, but they remain quintessentially an extremely patriotic, nationalistic people. Mm. You know that they remained, it was the theater of Cold War, and they were divided as a country. And for them to have come together and united, uh, it is something that is remarkable. Uh, it hasn't happened in several other parts of the world which remain divided too. 
they've come together and not only that they remain united against external factors and external threats mm. so their patriotism their nationalism their love for their country and their ability to stay united against external factors i think is another very remarkable uh, feature and the anti hegemonic uh, approach yes. is really uh, laudable because yes. uh, i mean they are like they've been a beacon for liberty yes. uh, for for you know so yes. long against uh, great powers who yes. wanted uh, coveted their land or yes. their maritime resources but they've they you know they've been the quintessential underdog yes. but who uh, survived and who fought for uh, their core values and for their territorial integrity and sovereignty yeah and a third thing which struck me uh, about vietnam and the vietnamese people is their very pragmatic approach to life you know they were after all you know uh, victims of the big powers including us and france and others but they have uh, managed to uh, put it behind them and work you know today all of southeast asia continues to remain a theater of great power rivalry but they are pragmatic enough to understand what is in their national interest and therefore they're able to work with all partners in what serves their best interests so i would say those are the three very remarkable features about vietnam which which stood out which i've seen first hand and india ma'am i mean obviously uh, the strategic importance of india for vietnam has just been growing and uh, they have clearly identified us as a major a uh, partner and uh, our own prime minister uh, narendra modi ji has said that we view vietnam from a long term and strategic view point and uh, clearly it's reciprocated on their side so uh, clearly this has been uh, especially the last 7 uh, 8 years seems to be like a big uh, transformative moment in india vietnam relations part of this uh, you know commonality of being anti hegemonic and also the pragmatism that you spoke about so india vietnam i think we are in a sweet spot and it seems to be going really well yes of course uh, from india's perspective india is this uh, vietnam is a central pillar of our act east policy and uh, of our indo pacific policy and you know we share a common interest and common concerns about our shared indo pacific region where we uphold together a rules based international order where we believe in uh, freedom of navigation and aviation where we both uh, believe that in sovereignty and territorial integrity and uh, we firmly advocate that uh, any disputes in that region should be uh, handled uh, peacefully mm. uh, without threat or use of force and because of these common strategic interests uh apart from the fact that we we have come together much more in recent years but traditionally historically civilizationally uh we have been very close it's borne out by you know the charm monuments and buddhism and all of that yeah. but even during our struggle for independence we were struggling around the same period we supported each other during uh, post independence we supported each other in our national development within our uh, capacities that we had and i think that has generated a huge amount of goodwill and uh, and i think more recent years of course you mentioned uh, in the last 5 years particularly i think the relationship has gone from strength to strength strength to strength uh, says ambassador preeti saran we have upgraded from strategic partnership to comprehensive strategic partnership uh, viewers we'd like you to hear india's external affairs minister dr subramaniam jayashankar talk about the value of vietnam and then resume the discussion let's hear him as political and security partners india and vietnam have converging interests in a multipolar and rebalancing world we have been supportive of each other's objectives whether in asean led forums or on global platforms our cooperation in the un security council this year has been exemplary our shared respect for international law including unclos 1982 and a rules based order is a strong commonality it is this larger vision of how we wish to see the world evolve that really brings us together we are both societies that are fiercely independent and deeply committed to maintaining our freedom of choices these traits make us the foundation of a multipolar asia in the coming years india's act east policy 
has been the guiding principle of our engagements with ASEAN partners and Vietnam is no exception. The success of this policy has led us to adopt a larger Indo-Pacific approach that captures India's growing strategic interests more effectively. From the Indian perspective, Vietnam is a key partner both in the ASEAN and the Indo-Pacific context. We already have a substantial agenda underway, whether it is in commerce, connectivity or culture. Our political and defense cooperation has also been steadily growing. These can be further buttressed by interaction between the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific and the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative that has been proposed by India. So viewers, um, India's external affairs minister talking about points of convergence, uh, especially uh, political and strategic, but also trade and commerce and culture and connectivity. Ambassador Saran, uh, the point that uh, Dr. Jay Shankar made about India and Vietnam being the foundations of a multipolar Asia and a multipolar world, I mean that is big, right? What he's saying is essentially when we two come together, it's of course uh, trade and commerce and investment and mutually beneficial nitty gritty but also he's also laying out the big picture which is that we both of us want a multipolar Asia and that's a very important uh, point because we have uh, a northern neighbor which does not want any other power to rise uh, up to its level and which wants to actually browbeat smaller countries and clearly Vietnam is not willing to accept that and in that context you know the idea that India and Vietnam together can create a multipolar Asia uh, we have other power centers Japan is a, another major power center in the region Korea is a power center but uh, definitely in the Southeast Asian context Indonesia, Vietnam and um, these are the two most capable countries you know, with the best geography, geopolitical situation and uh, also sufficient uh, economic and military strength. So your thoughts on this idea ma'am? Yes, no, I completely agree with you and everything that you've said. Uh, I think the Indo-Vietnam relations is a force for stability in the Indo-Pacific region which is a multipolar uh, region. It cannot be dominated by one entity and um, it will not be allowed to be dominated by one entity and we, uh, uh, Vietnam is a seafaring nation. Mm. It has both commercial and territorial interests, so do we. We are a seafaring nation too, very much part of the Indo-Pacific. Bilaterally with Vietnam, we have commercial interests in South China. So you mentioned uh, the dispute that they have with uh, China on in South China Sea. Well, we have a fraught relationship with China too and we deal with it as they deal with it mm. uh, and we don't take sides in their territorial dispute but we definitely support Vietnam in upholding a rules-based international order notably UN clause which mm. determines uh, when there are overlapping claims and how to go about it. And ma'am, uh, talking of resilient supply chains, Vietnam has been able to attract a lot of the western foreign investment that has uh, left China. Yes. And uh, it's become a big uh, success story in terms of manufacturing and uh, FDI. And um, we would hope to also replicate Vietnam's success story here in India through Make in India. But there's also a lot going on. I mean, the bilateral volume of trade have almost touched 15 billion dollars yes. um, last year, and uh, we are setting very ambitious targets and more complementarities. During your time as ambassador, I'm sure you have promoted a lot of the commercial relations also. So um, tell our audiences how uh, you as a diplomat facilitate these things. I mean, Indian businesses, Vietnamese businesses, how do you make them come together? And uh, please uh, enlighten us. Well, ultimately, it is the business entities that must show their own will and see a commercial interest in wanting to do business with each other. I think government can merely be facilitators in providing, uh, you know, uh, the rules, the agreements that we sign. The India ASEAN uh, free trade agreement has given a major boost to our bilateral trade uh, between India and Vietnam. We also have a subcommission mm -hmm. on trade and that meets very regularly at secretary's level. I had hosted one during my time. In addition to that, we had tried to identify the number of Indian investments that had taken place in the energy sector, in agro-processing, coffee plantations, mm. cashew, fisheries and other areas of 
cooperation in agro processing and agriculture uh, where our exports were growing uh, i'm happy to know that they have more than doubles from the time that i was there and i think just in spite of covid yeah. uh, you know i think we've done well i think uh, uh, new areas of um, potential cooperation include in the pharmaceutical sector there it was there but i think we could do better with vietnam both in in i think pharmaceuticals as well as in agriculture and agro processing uh, they have become very important exporters of textiles and garments mm. and there you know actually we have a healthy competitive relationship but i think there is potential for us and again in in, in mobile telephone manufacturing etc where we could also be part of uh, uh, resilient value uh, supply chains mm. and that is where i see potential indian investments can become a major boost for encouraging trade uh, between our two countries i think currently we have about nearly to the tune of 2 billion dollars uh, we are not amongst the top um, uh, investors in vietnam but i see potential there again if we were to look at the complementarities uh, i think we could we could do better but already i think we have done well for ourselves and uh, the fact that apart from uh, uh, self reliance i think we are both focused as countries to uh, technology to mm -hmm. innovation mm -hmm. to digitization i think these are other areas which can provide us uh, scope for future collaboration and uh, interestingly uh, you see that a lot of vietnamese capacity building um, in areas like cyber security space you know digital imagery through satellites uh, though all those india is committing to do those things with them um, so the uh, nuclear energy i mean these are all cutting edge fields where um, there is a clear complementarity and a mutual need so uh, it's good to see that uh, we are helping to build capacities of a, a fairly advanced country like vietnam itself but where we have an advantage they are uh, keen to Uh, avail of them no? so our capabilities are being able to replenish theirs there is of course a mutual need but there's also a mutual comfort mm. you know that is very important when we talk about sensitive areas whether it's uh, peaceful uses of nuclear energy or defense cooperation the fact that vietnam chooses to seek india's support mm -hmm. uh, whether it is in capacity building whether it, it is in utilizing lines of credit for enhancing their defense capability their security the fact that india becomes a natural partner for them uh, speaks for the the the, um, the understanding and the comfort that we have with each other and the trust in the relationship i think that is a very notable feature of our uh, bilateral relations absolutely ambassador preeti sir is talking about trust and uh, viewers i've got a special package for you uh, a message from um, one of the leading uh, vietnamese scholars of india and of south asia Uh, her name is Dr. Lethi Hangnya, and uh, she's at the Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, uh, the premier uh, uh, social science institution of the country. And uh, she has something for us about India. Let's hear her. Looking back, Vietnam's foreign policy in the past several decades, it can be seen that now is the time India enjoy the highest position in Vietnam's foreign policy. Vietnam. India is not the only comprehensive strategic partner of Vietnam, but I think India enjoys the highest level of strategic trust of Vietnam in the context of the increasingly complicated world which lack of trust. The fact that India enjoys the Vietnam's strategic trust is very significant. India is important partner of Vietnam's foreign policy of diversification and giving priorities to big powers. Politically, India is a long-standing loyal, reliable and traditional friend of Vietnam. This has been tested through times. Vietnam highly appreciate India as a rising power since independence. India has been a responsible member in protecting and preserving human values it participate and is a founding member of many regional and global organizations including the non aligned movement the united nations the wto the g20 etc economically vietnam highly appreciate india's economic growth in spite of the covid-19 pandemic Uh, India's new initiatives under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, such as Make in India, Digital India, Self-Reliant India, uh, the vision to turn India to 
an economy of 5 trillion USD resonates with Vietnam's uh, development strategy up to 2030 and its vision to become an, uh, a developed economy by 2045 has launched up the 13th Congress of the Vietnamese Communist Party. India is strategically important to Vietnam. India-Vietnam relationship is to be uh, placed uh, in the context of the ever-changing uh, geopolitical landscape of the Indo-Pacific region. Many scholars in Vietnam believe that India as a country possessing nuclear weapons, having strong and modern military forces, being an active member of Quad and many Indo-Pacific mechanisms, uh, India is among the few countries capable of balancing influence in the region and in the world. And I think the India-Vietnam defense relationship is also to be seen in this context, uh, Vietnam currently has demand to modernize and strengthen its military forces and I think Indian capacities and Vietnamese demands are the reasons for the rapid development of the defense relationship between the two countries. Dr. Hang Nia talking about uh, defense cooperation and how India and Vietnam are critical to balance influence in the Indo-Pacific. That's the term she has used. And um, Ambassador Saran, defense is clearly a growth area yes. and uh, it can happen only between uh, strategic partners who have a great deal of trust, as you've also said. Uh, we are talking about uh, Brahmos anti-ship cruise missiles. We're talking about uh, Varunastra anti, uh, uh, torpedoes, anti-submarine anti torpedoes. There is a talk about Akash uh, surface to air missiles, uh, long range missiles, um, coastal radar systems, uh, naval intelligence, surveillance, you know, the whole gamut of needs for um, Vietnam's defense. Increasingly, India seems to be able to be uh, a provider. And that's a big shift because uh, historically Vietnam um, has been hesitant to deal with the US because of the baggage, although they are now made up uh, and are now uh, also approaching the US for some of their needs. But uh, I think the, the fact that they have China to manage and the fact that they need a reliable partner, Russia has been a common thread between India, Vietnam, uh, all of us. But then they also are looking to diversify and that's where I think as Dr. Hang Nia was talking about, uh, they have certain needs and uh, India is stepping forward. Perhaps early in earlier eras we were more hesitant because of the fear of upsetting China or of, you know, uh, of that uh, it may anger our northern neighbor. But now I think we are far more uh, strategically clear in our mind as to what our priorities are and unfettered we go ahead with our, for our friends like Vietnam. So your thoughts on this uh, defense relationship? So first and foremost, today we can say that India-Vietnam relations have reached a level of confidence and mutual trust and it stands on its own and the fact that there is comfort enough to be able to uh, discuss sensitive technologies and defense cooperation uh, is something that has not happened overnight it has been over the years we've started uh, initially with capacity building and training programs uh, interoperability high level exchanges a great deal of understanding and then the lines of credit that have come in for defense equipment including the, the high speed boots that we talked about mm. and you've mentioned some others and I, I would say yes that uh, uh, we both uh, do take uh, a strong long term vision of our relationship and uh, I, I am very uh, optimistic about uh, our defense cooperation only being strengthened in the future. And Ambassador, the location, the geopolitical location of Vietnam, the eastern seaboard of Vietnam, for example, you have, you know, extraordinary um, you know, positional advantages, Kamran Bay, Nha Chang, I mean, these places where our Navy has been supportive of theirs and vice versa. I mean, if you have mutual logistics and agreements and, uh, you know, informal arrangements for uh, armies of both sides to uh, jointly exercise and patrol. I think eventually the hope is that both sides will be able to stabilize. When we say stabilize, it is meant to establish a deterrence against, uh, you know, unlawful and hegemonic pushes. So that's where uh, Vietnam also seems to have shed some of their earlier hesitation. Uh, because they have been wary of, you know, directly confronting China because they have a huge economic relationship with them also. But now I think they're quite clear uh, as far as this, especially their security interests go. Uh, they want India. They also involved with Japan now. Japan is taking a bigger role in Southeast Asia, including Vietnam. So they're, um, you know, the what they call the East Sea. 
or what the Chinese call the South China Sea, I mean, there is no way they will make a compromise on it. I mean, Vietnamese are clear that if they need to establish deterrence through partnerships with other players like India, they will do it. And uh, I think on that front, um, they are, you know, by their very character, uh, you know, fighters. And I think that is showing. And that is probably one of the fill up for our uh, growing defense relationship. Yes, of course, we have mentioned it in our earlier discussions as well. I think uh, uh, India-Vietnam relations is really a force of stability in that region. And uh, not just in defense cooperation, we have talked about the commercial aspects as well. I would say also in a multi, uh, multi-faceted world, a multi-faceted relationship like we have with Vietnam. Uh, takes on an importance uh, in a multipolar world mm. where you cannot have you know just one or two entities dominate that region uh, also the presence of india vietnam's you know commitment to a rules based order mm. provides that stability for um, sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, particularly of smaller nations where we uphold uh, the international systems absolutely and ambassador last thoughts on uh, Vietnam within ASEAN. I mean, they were a uh, country coordinator for India for a number of years. They have facilitated our engagement with the other ASEAN countries. Inarguably, you know, they are our major de facto ally within ASEAN also. So, uh, and Indonesia being the other big player there. So, our activist policy um, has many uh, pillars, but un undoubtedly it rests so much on Vietnam. and. Uh, uh, your thoughts on how uh, the process works? I mean, for the audiences, uh, briefly, if you can tell them how uh, Vietnam um, advocates for India within ASEAN. You know, how does that process work? You know, so that way, ten country, uh, ten member group, all of it uh, increasingly looking towards India with a lot of positive hope. And we have a few vectors that are facilitating it. And the primary one being Vietnam. Yes, of course, we have excellent relations with all the 10 ASEAN countries, uh, both bilateral and in the regional context. And um, really, uh, uh, these are the 10 countries with whom we can really see that each of the relationship is issues free. But I would say that Vietnam definitely was in the forefront in the initial period when we started our dialogue partnership, our sectoral dialogue with them, and then, you know, enhancing our cooperation to a strategic partnership. Uh, coincidentally, Vietnam was the country coordinator uh, um, some years back in 2017 when we were talking in terms of uh, India hosting the India ASEAN uh, summit to mm -hmm. commemorate 25 years of our relationship when India hosted all the 10 leaders from ASEAN uh, for a special summit in New Delhi in January 2018. and. Uh, uh, also hosted them as chief guests for our Republic Day. Unprecedented. We've never had ten, ten heads leaders, of yeah. ten heads of government and state um, uh, for our Republic Day. And I would say that uh, Vietnam's uh, role as country coordinator was extremely positive in making that possible and for such a positive outcome that came out of that special summit, uh, which continues to uh, give positive dividends uh, in India-ASEAN relations as well as in India-Vietnam bilateral relations and India's relations with other ASEAN countries. Absolutely. So, viewers, uh, Vietnam has been a major force uh, multiplier for India's uh, activist policy and uh, we are truly grateful to this uh, comprehensive strategic partnership the way it is blossoming and uh, it fulfills needs on both sides. So, you can see how core national interests, values, all these are converging in forming this special bond uh, between Vietnam and India. I want to thank Ambassador Preeti Saran for her thank time. You. Uh, thank you ma'am for enlightening the audience. Uh, viewers keep thinking about uh, India's key strategic partnerships. Uh, Vietnam uh, definitely is a building block uh, but there are many more and I will come back to you next time with another country that matters to India. Until then, take care.